Hi guys, <clears throat> it is a cold, gray, gloomy winter day <clears throat> here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in this uh, <clears throat> swamp out in the middle of what's supposed to be the sunshine state. Uh, I don't see much sunshine out there today. So anyway, we have stumbled into Friday January 8th, 2021, and so uh, I didn't get to uh, Manga Bay on New Year's Day, so this is going to be the uh, opening bell of uh, my ecological meltdown roundup rant of 2021 as we check in to see what is on the minds of Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over there at mongabay.com uh, here in the opening days of uh, 2021 and we're going to kick off oh, Rhett Butler himself has uh, interviewed some uh, climatologist named Tim Linton maybe we need to get Tim on the show you know I'm going to be cranking up my interviews. I don't believe this, guys. So, uh, if you have anybody you would like me to interview on Collapse Chronicles, please uh, email me or put it in the comments. Uh, I'm looking for suggestions of collapsitarians to interview. So, maybe uh, we'll talk to Tim. So, who is this guy? We are approaching critical climate tipping points, according to Tim Lanton. Take it away, Red, and uh, tell us about this. <clears throat> over the past 20 years, I would say over the past 50 years, the concept of tipping points has become more familiar to the public. Well, to about one-tenth of one percent of the public, Red. Tipping points are critical thresholds at which small changes can lead to dramatic shifts in the state of the entire system. Awareness of climate tipping points has grown in recent years in no small part thanks to the work of climate scientist Tim Linton who serves as the director of the Global Systems Institute at Britain's University of <clears throat> Exeter. Linton says the rate at which we appear to be approaching several tipping points is now ringing alarm bells. Oh yes, there is uh, certainly all sorts of news about climate tipping points ringing alarm bells that I see in the mainstream media, right? Yes, the rate at which we appear to be approaching, or I would say in the middle of several tipping points, is now ringing alarm bells, but according to Lanton, quote, most of our current generation of politicians are just not up to this leadership task. Do you think so, Dr. Linton? Okay, well, Rhett's really in an interviewing mood. Uh, Rhett has a second interview uh, with uh, WRI, World Resource Institute's uh, Andrew Steer. Yes. Between the, uh, well, guys, the, you know, sometimes the C word crops up here at Manga Bay. Between the <clears throat> C word, rising food insecurity and poverty, and catastrophic disasters like wildfires, storms, and droughts, 2020 was a year of challenges that prompted widespread calls for systemic change in how we interact with one another, with other species, and with the environment. This is Rhett's 
uh, talking. Bringing about such changes will require transforming how we produce our food and energy, how we move from one place to another, and how we define economic growth. But it is a lot harder to talk about transforming systems than to actually do it. Because real change is hard, we are more likely to slip back into our old habits and return to business as usual than embrace paradigm shifts. Do you think so? And uh, with that, uh, Rhett interviews Andrew Steer. Uh, oh, he's a former president of the World Bank. But it looks like Rhett Butler has just written the entire... Uh, maybe Rhett needs some help. You know, I have actually sent in my resume to Rhett a couple of times. You know, I've written for Manga Bay. I've interviewed Rhett. Uh, I have actually sent in my resume to Rhett Butler a couple of times and been completely ignored uh, by Rhett. Anyway, so uh, usually what Rhett is doing this, uh, you know, the opening of each year, he does this story, 10 things to watch for, a, you know, about rainforest in the coming year. But he actually, I guess, came up with 11. Rainforest, 11 things to watch in 2021. 2020 was a rough year for tropical rainforest conservation efforts. So, what is in store for 2021? Okay, according to Rhett Butler, I don't know if this is all 11 of these. Uh, the uh, I love how he calls it the post-corona panic recovery. You know, Rhett Butler is the most honest environmental journalist uh, admitting that the corona panic is a bad thing for the planet. Uh, one of the reasons, uh, one of the main reasons that 2020 was a rough year for tropical rainforest conservation efforts was the corona panic. Uh, thank you, Rhett, but I love his optimism. The post-corona panic recovery, yes. <clears throat> the transition of power in the U.S., deforestation in Indonesia, deforestation in Brazil, the effects of the La Nina climate pattern ongoing destabilization of tropical forest. <clears throat> of course, the government-to-government -government carbon deals. And then we have the C-word a second time. Data that will allow better assessment of the impact of the corona panic on tropical forest. Yes. How about this? How about global the global corporatocracy incorporating forest risk into their decision making? Of course, the ongoing violence against environmental defenders, and finally, whether international policy meetings can get back on track. Uh, yes. Uh, all right, so the first, uh, so, you know, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel. Uh, they, they, they do a YouTube video each week. So I guess this is the lead-off video for 2021 titled Finding Traps. And they go over to Uganda where bushmeat hunting escalates 
as Uganda grapples with floods and corona panic lockdowns. Now, guys, okay, I need to uh, already, I know what, what you guys are saying, that I made a New Year's resolution not to mention the corona panic, but uh, I put an asterisk by that, that if, uh, and, 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 well, I, I guess I needed to put two asterisks by it, uh, that if I am interviewing somebody and they bring up the subject of corona panic, you know, we're going to talk about the corona panic, and the other one is, is Rhett Butler. On, on, I, I am going to give myself a, uh, a pass on my already failed New Year's resolution that uh, I am going to continue to cover uh, the C word when I on, on my Friday uh, ecological meltdown roundup rants, uh, since Rhett Butler is the only uh, environmental journalist on this planet with the balls uh, to discuss this subject honestly. And here he is sounding like uh, the last interview I had with Bill Gaty, uh, you know, talking about how economic problems are going to end up with every one of our fellow earthlings getting eaten is the sixth mass extinction is going to be caused by humans eating every one of their fellow earthlings otherwise known as the bushmeat trade which is going to be triggered by economic collapse such as the economic lockdowns as this massive overreaction to the corona panic. Thank you, Rhett Butler, for uh, <clears throat> vindicating Bill Gaty. Okay. All right. Let's go over back to, uh, you know, back to end to Sumatra to talk about the, you know, those orangutans, the Tapa Nuli orangutan, the most endangered ape on the planet. What is the outlook for the Tapa Nuli orangutan? Historical data point to the imminent extinction of the Tapa Nuli orangutan. A new study indicates that the Tapanuli orangutan, already the world's most threatened great ape species, faces a much greater th risk of extinction than previously thought. This new study estimates the orangutans today occupy just two and a half percent of their historical range and attributes this to loss of habitat in hunting. And those threats are now compounded by mining and infrastructure um, projects, including the orangutan's last known habitat in northern Sumatra. You know, of course, this new hydroelectric dam is going to be the final death hammer to uh, this species of great ape. Uh, at the current rate, at which its habitat is being lost and the ape is being hunted, the extinction of the Tapanuli orangutan is inevitable. You can kiss goodbye the Tapanuli orangutan. All right. So what is going, what is the first uh, news about microplastic showing up this year in Manga Bay? Great concern as study finds microplastics in human placentas. A new study has found microplastics present inside human placentas, which could potentially affect fetal health and development. The micro 
plastics probably enter the pregnant women's bodies through ingestion and inhalation. Yes. Uh, there, and, and if it's true for human placentas, it's true for every species of earthling on this planet. Uh, the placentas uh, of every single uh, fetus of every species, no doubt, has these microplastics in their placentas. All right. What is the first story of 2021? about palm oil. Indonesia's plantation program, meaning palm oil, on a collision course with wildlife and indigenous groups. And this is not just Indonesia's. Uh, it, it's any country on the planet planting more and more of this shit. Indonesia's food estate program threatens to overlap onto habitats of key species like orangutans and tigers in Sumatra. Yes, environmental activists warn this could exacerbate human-wildlife conflicts. Also at threat are forests that indigenous communities rely on for their livelihoods. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and then we've now we go over there to look at the critically endangered Sumatran elephant. Oh, good Lord, you know, orangutans, tigers, elephants, they're all doomed. Alright, what is going on with coral reefs in Hawaii in the opening bell of 2021. Hawaii's coral reefs are under threat due to a number of human-driven stressors such as coastal development, pollution, fishing, and climate change events like marine heat waves. Yes. Do you think so? Alright. Here is one. I haven't heard the words biotic annihilation uh, for a while. I'm going to be interviewing a fellow named Gerardo Ceballos here soon. And we're going to be talking about biotic annihilation. So what is going on uh, with biotic annihilation? Here in the opening bell of 2021, new study warns, warns of biotic annihilation driven by hunting and habitat destruction. <clears throat> Humans are driving our fellow earthlings to extinction 1,000 times faster than the natural rate, robbing our planet not just of species, but also of functional diversity. The authors of a new paper argue different kinds of human activities affect biodiversity differently, with hunting having the largest impact on terrestrial mammals, the research the researchers found. Again, Bill Gady being uh, vindicated here in this article. It is animals directly going into the stew pot. I have a problem with this. I still think it's habitat destruction, but uh, who am I to talk? We need to... Uh, Benny, can you track down the lead author of this study? and get them on the show. <clears throat> Millions of years of evolution are encoding into species that still coexist with humans today. To lose them is to lose that biological heritage. Yes, would you believe that hurdles abound 
hurdles abound in restoring mangroves in Indonesia. Yes. Uh, okay. All right, we have our second palm oil story of the year. <clears throat> Agribusiness giants are trading in conflict palm oil, report says. A report by Global Witness has found that more than 100 Indonesian palm oil mills supplying agro-business giants such as ADM and Bunge have been accused of land and human rights violations as well as environmental destruction. Global Witness found that neither of the uh, company is addressing the, the majority of these allegations hmm, and effectively passing on this conflict palm oil <coughs> to major consumer brands such as Nestle, Unilever, and PepsiCo. They have denied any failure to police their suppliers. Yes. Here is the first story on these, these absolutely unadulterated horseshit corporate sustainability pledges. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Nope. New research shows that despite these corporate deforestation commitments, forests are still dwindling, huh, are still dwindling with devastating effects on the climate, ecosystem services, and biodiversity. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, okay. Anyway, then, uh, you know, a lot of this is just reviewing the stories uh, that they went over in 2020. Uh, they divide them, and I love this one. The top positive environmental stories from 2020. That must be a short article. The top positive environmental stories from 2020, they have notable deaths in conservation in 2020, mostly talking about <coughs> the environmental activists who were shot dead, <coughs> shot dead, imprisoned, whatever, uh, and otherwise taken out, and then... Uh, we have how the sea word impacted rainforest in 2020. But don't worry, I'm not going to bore you uh, with how the sea word impacted rainforest in 2020. Because I don't want to harsh your mellow if you are one of these, you know, these little... Uh, deep green uh, myth makers about the C word. Anyway, guys, it is a cloudy, gloomy, ugly day. And uh, I need to take this little dog on a walk and figure out uh, what to do with the rest of my day and the rest of my life. But I really do need to get back to uh, getting ready to start lining up interviews. So once again, please send uh, your suggestions for who you would like to hear me interview in 2021. And I'll see what I can do for you. And oh yeah, if you uh, enjoyed what Rhett Butler had to share with you, please give the man some love and give this a thumbs up. And if you want to uh, subscribe... To Collapse Chronicles, I noticed I have lost 21 subscribers. Uh, I have lost more subscribers 
uh, and the opening bell of uh, 2021 than I have, you know, since that crash uh, last spring. I will assume it the the 21 subscribers who have fled uh, this site uh, did not appreciate what Deb Ozarko uh, had to say about the C word uh, in her New Year's Eve sign off. But we will get Deb on the show sometime this year. We will bring Deb Ozarko back on the show and uh, I will try to avoid getting in to the C word conversation with Deb. I think she made her point clear on it. And I agree with Deb 100%. Get out there and enjoy this cold January day while you still can. Are you ready to go for a walk, little dog? He's up. I'm ready to go for a walk. Bye, guys.